So in this video, I want to help you think about questions that ask you about how the Greeks are portrayed versus the other in Greek art. And of course, the first thing to do with that uh, type of question is to unpick what is meant by the other. And within Greek art, we have come across various categories um, of peoples that would count. So Amazons, um, Centaurs, Trojans, and of course the Libyan giant Antaeus as well. So that's kind of your evidence pool that you have to work with. Now, like with any essay, you want to be, of course, focusing on themes. So we want to try and avoid talking about one vase at a time or one piece of sculpture at a time, because if we work in themes, we're going to start drawing links between um, pieces of evidence and it's going to look altogether more sophisticated. So hopefully this video will help you point out some of the themes that you could have talked about in relation to the Greeks versus the other. So the first one is the Greeks very successfully contrast um, their appearance with that of foreigners. So some examples on the screen here. On the left, you're looking at Heracles fighting the giant Antaeus. And Antaeus is from Libya and the son of Gaia. Um, if you look at Heracles, who's in front, he's got a short, trimmed, well-maintained beard. Whereas Antaeus has much longer, unkempt, scraggly beard, and also you can see his longer hair at the back there too. And um, he's also got a rather stylish moustache. On the right, we're looking at Heracles and the Amazons by Euphronios. And if you look at Heracles, who is centre stage, um, he's got his heroic nudity going on, apart from, of course, that lion skin that goes over his head. Um, and if you look to um, what is the bottom left of that vase that, as you can see on my screen, you'll just about see an arm reaching up. This is one of the Amazons and they are wearing um, a kind of a Phrygian costume, which is like an all-in-one tight fitting costume, which distinguishes them as foreign, as non-Greek. As well as kind of physical appearance, we can also have a look at fighting styles, specifically in the vase by Euphronios. So Heracles is fighting with a club, that's our typical hand-to-hand -hand combat from the Greeks, and the Amazons are fighting with their long-distance weapons, so many of them are shown as archers on this, which of course is seen as the kind of inferior fighting style to the Greeks. And there's a nice close-up of the Amazons that I was referring to, so you can get a better uh, indication of what that costume looks like. There's another example of contrast in appearance in the sculpture. So we're looking here at the west pediment of the Temple of Zeus at Olympia. And again, this time note that the Greek are lapith in this particular metaphor, has got the short Greek curly hair and no beard. And the centaur who is fighting him has got, again, the long, unruly, unkempt hair and beard. So it also applies um, for the centaurs as well as Antaeus, our Libyan giant. Um, and behaviour wise, it's very interesting as well, because if you have a look at um, the lapith, he has got no emotion whatsoever on his face. He's very controlled, um, which is, of course, indicative of the fact that he is the more civilised of the two. Um, you can't quite see it in the image I've shown you here, but some of our centaurs grimace and you can certainly say that kind of biting is seen as a barbaric behaviour. We also successfully see the Greeks present themselves as superior to others, um, usually through pose um, in the examples that I've given you here. So starting again with Heracles and Antaeus, um, Heracles is in front for a start and when we get crossing diagonals which are indicative of conflict it's often the person who is laid in front that is the victorious one the victor um, and not just that but if you look at Heracles face similar to what we just saw with the lapids he's very controlled there's hardly any emotion on his face there whereas the giant Antaeus um, has actually got a furrowed brow and looks really um, kind of struggling against Heracles. So there's a difference in the emotion. We can tell who's finding this challenge more difficult. Again, if we look at um, the Heracles and the Amazons vase by Euphronios, um, Heracles is at the 
front again, taking centre stage, striding forwards. Um, he single-handedly looked about to take on three Amazons on the right-hand side, but notably look, the floor, the bottom part of that scene is littered with falling Amazons to show ultimately who is winning this particular battle. Finally, we're having a look at a vase to my left by the Berlin painter. Um, this is one where we've got Achilles fighting on both sides. He's fighting uh, Hector on one side and he's fighting Memnon on the other. And on this particular one that I've shown you, this is Hector. And notice that where Achilles strides forward confidently, Hector kind of falls onto his back foot uh, and is, is losing his footing. And in fact, the gods behind him <laughs> are walking away. They know that all is lost. We also see it in the sculpture as well, this idea of the Greeks being superior. So this is the Temple of Athea at Egina, and we're looking at Heracles from the East Pediment, and we're looking at a, a rather lovely reconstruction in colour of Paris from the West Pediment. And whilst at first glance these might look very similar in terms of the poses that they are in, um, Heracles is much more confident at shooting that bow and arrow than Paris. Look at his straight arm in comparison to Paris's that is slightly bent. Um, he's also, as well, slightly turning towards the viewer. He's kind of confidently looking out towards us. And a further example from sculpture. Here we have Heracles on the Temple of Apollo at Bassae, the frieze. Um, and it's the Amazonomachy part, and he is shown um, fighting Queen Hippolyta here. And notice again the crossing diagonals and who's in front. Who is the victor? It is, of course, our Greek Heracles. However, there are some depictions of the other that take on a very different feel to others and are worth evaluating for that respect because it looks really good in an essay to kind of show where perhaps some vases or some sculpture takes a different approach to the others and then to look at why. So this is the Vivenzio Hydra here and it's got a very uh, pathos inducing presentation of our Trojans because whilst the Greeks are, are of course winning they're shown committing um, absolutely terrible acts here of, of hubris. So on the left hand side you've got Paris, uh, sorry Priam, who sat on the altar here, that's a Styanax, his grandson on his knee, and he's being killed by Neoptolemus whilst he's taking refuge on the altar, while he's sat there, and notice his hands are to his head in that traditional grief pose. Similarly, on the right hand side, also taking refuge, but this time um, around a statue of Athene is Cassandra. And, you know, she is bared. She is kind of fully frontal nude, which is, of course, um, very unusual for women to be shown in that manner. So we get her vulnerability. And there is Ajax the Lesser grabbing hold of her hair and dragging her off the statue. So in this presentation of the other, um, we don't really feel um, any of the emotions we've seen in the previous examples. Instead, we certainly sympathise with the Trojans and we actually start to, to think again about the Greeks. The reason why this presentation is so different is to do with the time in which it's being painted. So this vase is contemporary with the Persian Wars. And during the Persian Wars, some Greek city-states defected to the Persian side. And there has been a real sense of sadness at the fact that Greeks have been fighting Greeks during this war. And it's more difficult to work out who the enemy is. But also the kind of the sadness, the impact um, of warfare on the innocent and on civilians. This is certainly the message being put forward by this particular vase. Finally, we've got this presentation um, from the Temple of Apollo at Bassae. Again, it's our Amazonomachy, but I want to look at it in a similar vein to what we've just done with the Vivenzio Hydra. Here too, we sympathise with the Amazons. Um, they look out at us, the viewer, with sad expressions. You know, we see, for example, to my right here, a fallen Amazon um, and someone behind her trying to support her. 
Um, so again, we're starting to sympathize with the enemy. And the reason behind that with this particular freeze is very similar to the Vivenzio Hydra. It's, it's kind of sculpted during a time of warfare. This time, this is more contemporary with the Peloponnesian War, uh, a war between Greek city-states, so Athens and her allies and Sparta and her allies. So even more of a reason to not know who is the enemy anymore and which to sympathize with. So I hope you found that look at Greeks versus the other particularly useful. Just a quick reminder that it's always best to work in themes and then to use your evidence uh, to support it and to make links between the different examples.